Today we've got a problem from the Math Olympiad team selection test from Switzerland. And while this problem is pretty interesting, I think maybe a really good takeaway from this video is this lemma that we'll use, this technique. And this is one of perhaps the lesser known uh, results that is useful in math contest type problems. But before we get to talking about this result, let's look at the problem and reduce what we want to show to something a little bit simpler. Okay, so let's say that n is an integer which is bigger than or equal to 2. And what we'll do is show that if n squared plus 4 to the n plus 7 to the n over n is a natural number, then n squared plus 4 to the n plus 7 to the n over 11 times n is also a natural number. Okay, so like I said, we want to first reduce this to a couple of things that are perhaps a little bit easier to show. Okay, and what will those be? So let's notice first of all that if n over 11 plus 4 to the n plus 7 to the n over 11 to the n is a natural number, then we're done. And that's because, well, this thing to the left of the element of symbol clearly combines together to give us this object right here. Okay, well, let's break this down into, you know, some special cases of this. So that means that if 11 divides n, and the number of times that 11 divides into the numerator is strictly bigger than the number of times that 11 divides into the denominator, then, well, we're done. But how can we write that? Well, we can write that using this function over here, which we won't talk about the lemma right now, but we will talk about this function. So it's really the number of times that p divides into a natural number function, if you will. And we'll use this Greek letter eta. So we'll say eta sub p of capital N equals k, if and only if p to the k divides n, but p to the k plus 1 does not divide n. So in other words, k is the largest power of p that divides into capital N. Okay, so how can we phrase this 4 to the n plus 7 to the n over 11 times n being a natural number in terms of this function? Well, it kind of goes like this. So we'll have eta sub 11 of 4 to the n plus 7 to the n has to be bigger than or equal to eta sub 11 of 11 times n. But we can rewrite this as 1 plus plus eta sub 11 of n. And I think that's pretty clear because, well, we're looking at eta sub 11 and here we've got this factor of 11 right here. And this function has this multiplicative to additive properly, sort of, sort of pretty clearly. So in other words, if we've got two of these conditions, then that means we are done. Okay, so let's maybe write a quick summary of those two conditions and then get to proving them. Okay, so we just reduced our problem to the following situation. And what it says is that if 11 divides n and the number of times 11 divides into 4 to the n plus 7 to the n is bigger than or equal to 1 plus the number of times 11 divides into n, then we're done. In other words, n squared plus 4 to the n plus 7 to the n over 11 times n is a natural number. Okay, so let's get to showing this first bit first, which I've color-coded in blue. So we're gonna work with this blue dot first. So let's suppose our hypothesis over here. So let's suppose that n squared plus four to the n plus seven to the n over n is a natural number. But let's observe that we can split this thing up into n squared over n plus, well, the rest over n. But n squared over n is pretty clearly a natural number, so that leads us to see that that means that 4 to the n plus 7 to the n over n is also a natural number. But observe that that's equivalent to the following congruence relation. We have 4 to the n 
plus seven to the n is congruent to zero mod n. That's because if this object is a natural number, then that means that n divides n to the numerator evenly. Okay, but then what does that tell us? That tells us that four to the n plus seven to the n is congruent to zero modulo p for all primes p that divide n. Okay, good. And now, now I'd really like to notice that p cannot be equal to two and p can also not be equal to seven. And let's check that real quick. So let's observe that if p is equal to two, in other words, that if two divides into n, or in other words, if n is even, then what do we have? Well, notice that this part's even, this four to the n is pretty clearly even. Then we have seven to the n is congruent to zero mod two. That's because four is congruent to zero mod two. So we've got seven to the n congruent to zero mod two. But that's clearly impossible because seven to the n is odd. It's congruent to one mod two. Okay, now let's look at the case. If p is equal to two, then what do we have? Well, in that case, very, very similarly, we'll have four to the n is congruent to zero mod seven. But again, that's a contradiction. And well, that's a contradiction because, well, four can never be, or four raised to a power can never be a multiple of seven. Okay, so now putting these two facts together, what do we know? Well, we know that two does not divide into n evenly, and we know that seven does not divide into n evenly. Okay, so let's maybe record that data up here. And after we record that data up here, we'll get going. So for all primes p dividing n, notice that p is not equal to two, and p is not equal to seven. And what we'll do now is, well, play with perhaps the smallest prime that divides n. Okay, so let's do that. So let's suppose, maybe we'll call it p naught is the smallest prime dividing n. Well, let's notice that this congruence relation right here is most definitely going to hold for p naught. So we can quickly write that down in another version. So four to the n is congruent to minus seven to the n modulo p naught. But then let's also notice by Fermat's little theorem, we have seven, seven to the power p naught minus one is congruent to one modulo p. Again, like I said, that's by Fermat's little theorem. But observe, that means that seven inverse is congruent to seven to the p naught minus two modulo p naught. So there we've got like a multiplicative inverse modulo p naught, a multiplicative inverse of seven, and that's simply seven to the p zero minus two. So we wanna use that to essentially multiply both sides of this congruence by the inverse of seven. So let's do that, and we'll have four times seven to the p naught minus two, all to the n is congruent to minus one modulo p zero. So we've got something like that. And then maybe while we're at it, let's maybe set this number equal to something just so that it's kind of easier to work with. So maybe we'll perhaps set this equal to a. So let's observe the following. So let's note that we have a to the n is congruent to minus one modulo p naught. And let's also notice that we have a to the p naught minus one is congruent to one mod p naught. That second one from Fermat's little theorem. Let's also observe that these two exponents are relatively prime. So in other words, the GCD of n and p naught minus one is equal to one. And that's because otherwise, 
we would have a smaller prime dividing n, a smaller prime than p0, but we've decided that p0 is the smallest such prime. So, since those are relatively prime, we have the following Diophantine equation existing. So in other words, there exists what I'll call x and y, which are integers, such that n times x plus, let's see, p0 minus 1 times y is equal to 1. Okay, so that's looking good, but let's see where that can take us. So now let's notice that 4 times 7 to the p0 minus 2, so that's equal to a, but that's pretty clearly equal to a to the 1. We might as well write a to the 1 using this equation as a to the n raised to the x times a to the p0 minus 1 raised to the y. Again, using that equation over there. But then a to the n is negative 1 from, let's see, this congruence right here. a to the p minus 1 is 1 by the congruence from Fermat's theorem. Also, we know that x must be odd. Now, how do we know that x must be odd? Well, look over here. p naught minus 1 is most definitely even. And that's because p naught is the smallest prime dividing n, but p naught cannot be equal to 2 from our previous discussion. So that means p naught is an odd prime, meaning p naught minus 1 is even. But if this component right here is even, that means this component is odd, which means that x must be odd. But that means here we've got minus 1 raised to an odd power mod, well, p0. So this whole thing is congruent to minus 1 modulo p0. Okay, so now we've done a bit of a calculation. But let's maybe get some of this stuff erased and start up with this extreme left-hand side and this extreme right-hand side. So we ended on the last board with the following congruence. We had 4 times 7 to the p0 minus 2 is congruent to negative 1 mod p0. Okay, so now what we'll do from here is multiply both sides of this congruence by 7. That'll raise this to a 7 to the p0 minus 1, but again, by Fermat's little theorem, we know that is 1, and we're left with negative 7 on the right-hand side. So that means we'll have 4 is congruent to negative 7 modulo our prime p0. But then, what does that mean? Well, by the definition of congruence, that means that p0 divides 4 minus negative 7, in other words, 4 plus 7. But 4 plus 7 is pretty clearly equal to 11, so that means that p0 divides 11. But if a prime divides another prime, then that means those two primes are equal. So that means that p0 is equal to 11. But that means that 11 must divide n. So notice, oh, that's our first little condition that we wanted to show up here. So again, we wanted to show that 11 divides n. Okay, so now let's finish this whole thing off with the second condition we want to show, the one that we have with a green dot. So we just finished showing that n is a multiple of 11, which was one of the things that we wanted to show. Now we want to show that the number of times that 11 divides into 4 to the n plus 7 to the n is bigger than or equal to 1 times the number of times 11 divides into n. And then that'll finish this whole thing off. And here's where we need this lemma that we talked about before, known as the lifting the exponent lemma. So again, this is one of these lesser known results that is useful in problem solving contests. So what does it say? Well, it says that if a prime p divides x plus y, and n is an odd number, then the number of times p divides into x to the n plus y to the n is equal to the number of times p divides into x plus y plus the number of times p divides into n. So essentially that's going to finish this whole thing off. And that's going to finish this whole thing off because as we saw before, we know that n is odd. Again, we did that calculation before. We saw that 2 cannot divide into n. Okay, well, that means that we have a to 11 of 4 to the n plus 7 to the n is equal to a to 11 of 4 plus 7 plus a to 11 of n.
oh, but four plus seven is equal to 11, meaning that this component right here is exactly equal to one, and then we have plus a to 11 of n. But that's exactly that green dot. So in fact, all of the heavy lifting here was done by this first blue dot thing that we needed to show, as well as this lifting the exponent lemma. Maybe post in the comments if you'd like another video about this lemma where we maybe prove it and give some more examples. And that's a good place to stop.